are you uh, are you ever, uh, ever afraid that you that you uh, in a sense attempted and tried too much I mean you've done radio and you've written for I don't think I have attempted enough and I don't think anybody does I think it's an age of terrible specialization I think everybody has many more capacities than they have the gall to try out and I regret how little adventuring I've done not how much have you ever felt like you just haven't done enough and that you haven't fulfilled your full potential as a person? There's an element of being an artist that you're constantly in pursuit of something that you can never fully attain. So I'm sure many of you can relate to that, but now imagine if you made the greatest film of all time or what many people consider the greatest film of all time. Harry. And imagine if also you did that at 26, and in addition to that, you made several other great films. You were a world-renowned actor, a Shakespearean expert, um, a painter, and an innovator of radio, the theater on Broadway, and et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And of course, you know who I'm talking about. That's Orson Welles. I don't think I have attempted enough, and I don't think anybody does that's so humbling to hear and it allows me to honestly find some peace because it makes me realize like a true artist is always going to want to create and there's always going to be something more for them to want to discover so let's kind of just dive into a few things with this first off orson welles response is very clear i haven't done enough that's what he says and then he follows that up with no one has how are we supposed to not allow that to become a negative force that drags us down and makes us just doubt and hate ourselves but instead how do we make that become a positive force that excites us about the potential and possibilities of the future that's the key we should not beat ourselves up over the fact that we haven't done enough because like orson Welles says here and i strongly agree with this no one has done enough everyone has fallen short of their potential and that's something that shouldn't discourage us or make us depressed, but instead it should allow us to look in the mirror and say, you're capable of more than this. And as an artist, that is a, a fantastic motivation to continue to create. So the next point he immediately follows up with this is kind of the answer to, and it's the solution to this question of what do I do when I realize I haven't done enough? Or what do I do when I realize my potential is far greater than where I currently am? Well, there's a very practical approach that he gives, which is that the world currently, and now, of course, this was uh, 60, 70 years ago, but I think it definitely applies to it today, especially with the internet. But he says the world currently is far too specialized. I think it's an age of terrible specialization. I think everybody has many more capacities than they have the gall to try out. People are fixated on only doing one thing. And that is a trap to fall into. We have this fear of failure because when you try something for the first time, you essentially become a child again. And you have the, you have to learn everything from the beginning, just like with a language, you start off with the language of an infant or a, a very small child. And that can be extremely discouraging. And, and there are a lot of studies on this that with adults, that is often the greatest thing that stops us from learning something new. So this fear of failure is what often gets us to just specialize in one thing because everyone can find one thing that, okay, this is what I'm really good at, this is what I know how to do, and I'm just gonna hyper-focus on this. But the problem with that is you can end up limiting your full potential because everyone has a variety of gifts and you can find a lot of fulfillment in discovering those gifts that you may have not even knew, known were there in the beginning. And Who's a better example of, of ver, a variety of gifts and talents than Orson Welles? Ah, the French champagne. Orson, as a small child, learned music. He hated it, and he stopped learning. Then, at the age of 16, Orson Welles left America for Ireland, and he studied painting and sketching, and he just traveled around Europe. And at the age of 16, people thought he was in his 20s because of his deep voice, and he ended up stumbling into the theater. So you can already see by the time he was not even a, an adult by today's standards, he was already studying such a variety of art forms. 
So after Orson Welles began to do theater in Europe, he eventually went back to the America and he ended up performing in the theater in Broadway. And he um, eventually innovated in Broadway in several ways. And then of course, everyone knows about Orson Welles in the radio. So by the time he was in his early 20s, he had done music, painting, sketching, acting, and then radio. And of course, with the War of the Worlds broadcast, Orson Welles shocked the world. Um, and many people thought that aliens were actually invading because of the innovative way that he um, recreated uh, radio journalism of the time. So people th thought the journalism was real. Um, and all of this was because of the, the ways that Orson Welles used different mediums. Um, his Mercury Theater actors were also his radio actors. So you can see how even the industry that he was building, he was using in different art forms. And then of course, because of his fame, around the age of 23 or 24, he was offered an, a landmark uh, carte blanche contract to make a feature film that eventually became Citizen Kane, which it, he finished around age 26. At that point, the film wasn't received universally as a great film, but within a decade or two, it was considered the greatest film of all time. So the specialization is unique with Orson Welles, but there's an insight in there that he was able, of course he was a genius and, um, and an intellectual, and he had all, also been sponsored by, I think it was his father-in-law, but he, he had a lot of backing behind him that allowed him to do these great things. But we can still take away from the fact that he was willing to try many different art forms and also fail in those art forms. So the takeaway, don't be afraid to try new mediums and try new things because these are the ways that we grow. And especially in the age of the internet where information is so easily accessible, we can basically learn anything we want at our fingertips. The last point is related to when Orson Welles says, a lot of people are too specialized and they don't have the gall to try things out. I think everybody has many more capacities than they have the gall to try out. They're too specialized, so they're afraid to try new things. And that relates to just a broader point of uh, the fear of risking to fail. Orson Welles, as a filmmaker, failed more than any other filmmaker. And I really believe that. And that's why he's my favorite director, because he took risks and he failed in so many ways. I mean, one of the most embarrassing ways that he failed was trying to get funding. Towards the end of his career, Orson Welles did everything to try to get funding. Towards the end of his career, he had probably anywhere from 10 to 20 incomplete films. In script phase, some of them were completely shot, some of them were partially shot. Of course, Other Side of the Wind was completely shot, but he didn't have access to the footage. He was a, a failure as much as a, a, a great success story. Um, his reputation, he kind of failed to maintain in many different ways. But the key is not that he failed. That is not the important thing about his story. The important thing about his story is that he never gave up. He constantly was working on new films. He was constantly finding a way to make movies and nothing was able to stop him from creating. And it really is an inspiring story when you look at it from that perspective. So risk failing, risk taking those chances on projects that may make you look stupid. We need to keep creating and pushing forward because in the end, it's not the um, destination, it's the journey, as cliche as that sounds. But I think ultimately that's the point that I'm trying to get across. So I hope you enjoyed that video. Please like and follow this channel because there's gonna be more inspiration to come. All right, everybody, have a good one.